In a previous video, we showed you unboxing the package that Yolanda sent us, full of wool. Now, at that time, I mentioned that I would like to make a couple of carding combs in order to process this fiber and get to be able to actually use it and spin it. And I have done just that. These are the carding combs I've made. If you've ever gone to a living history park and seen the way that they process wool, they typically do it with cards, not combs. And cards are like big flat boards with tons and tons of like Velcro-like tiny teeth. Now, these work great, but um, making them, because I like to make things from scratch, is very, very difficult because you have to make all those little pins and all of them have to have a slight hook in them. And so I went to the next oldest thing, and that is this. Now the way these things worked is as follows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spike a whole bunch of this wool onto this wool comb. And I'm going to get this nice and full, like so. And as soon as it gets about that full, I'll stop. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second comb. This comb is going to stay still. This comb is going to brush at a 90 degree angle away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush out. Oh, and I took some. I'm going to keep doing that until I've taken all the wool over onto this comb. I'm going to give it a slight downward angle to pull it down onto these spikes so it doesn't like float off. And I'm just going to do that take all the wool away a little at a time. And what I'm doing is I'm straightening all the fibers individually. And also, as soon as I'm done gathering it on this comb, you'll see that what's left on this comb is all of the short, nasty, pilled wool. I'm going to go backwards. It's a bad idea to point spiky things toward yourself, but I find it convenient. Okay, now I've got most of the wool off. Now if I remove this bit right here and hold it up, you'll see that it's the short bits and there's also a bunch of pills in there and also a tiny bit of vegetable matter and that's all left behind. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place all of that wool back onto this comb by bringing this one down like so, and I'm going to pass it all over to that one. Then I remove this bit of waste here. I'm going to set that aside with the other one. And do the same thing again. If when you were washing your wool you made any felted bits um, and accidentally felted it a little bit, this will catch some of that and take all those pills out and it'll come out as waste, so you still don't want to do it, but at least you can save the good stuff. Okay, so now I've got this frizzy thing. I've finished combing, I've put it all back on this comb. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather it all together, and this is the, the final step to make your fiber preparation. So I'm going to grab it, slightly longer than the staple length, by the end of this kind of beard. I'm just going to tug on that beard. And then I'm going to kind of move it back and forth to help it gentle along. As soon as you feel it getting weak, you choke up again. A little bit closer to the tines. And do the same thing again. And again. This is probably how Albus Dumbledore grows his beard so long. He's like sitting there being frustrated with students and as he tugs on it, it just gets longer. I mean, it works in a place like Hogwarts, for sure. You just continue that on and on until you have no more fiber left on the tines, which is coming up real soon. Dun, 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 dun.
All right, so now I've got this long thing with a bit in there. I'm just going to kind of semi-draft it out, smooth that out a little bit. And that is ready to spin, as is. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap this around my hand like so, pull that bit in, and then I've got kind of a nest shape like this, which I will put with the others. Now I've got my handy dandy drop spindle. This is actually from the first video we ever made here on Good and Basic, made out of a gavel. I'm going to start spinning. Oh, that's delightful. Now the reason I made wool combs is because they're easy to make, and I like to be I mean, one of the points of getting back to basics with crafts like spinning and weaving or blacksmithing or any of these others is to develop a strain of independence. And one way to take that spirit of independence to the next level is by making the tools whereby that thing is made. And in a craft as simple as spinning, that's eminently possible, and so I figured I'd give it a go. Now, the way I did it is by taking a piece of wood and drilling holes in it evenly spaced. I staggered mine. It doesn't have to be that way. And then punch nails through those holes. It's important to pre-drill those holes, otherwise you'll split the wood, as I learned, you know, along the way. The other thing that you want to note is that these nails have been sharpened. I took them to a grinding stone and gave them just a little bit more sharpness because they come out of a four-faced kind of pyramid shape, which isn't quite enough to grab into the wool the way you want it to. And then, finally, I put super glue along the back, which followed the nail into the hole and kind of sealed them in place. Last thing was, I carved a little notch in here that would meet up with this dowel and gave them handles. And that's really all there was to it. With these things, in other words, just some scrap wood and some nails, I can process wool. Since I can process wool and spin it using these primitive tools, I could theoretically go all the way from raw fleece to a completed product like a shirt without ever once going to the store, except for the nails. While I was at it with making these, I also made this hackle. And this I'm going to use to process some of the dog brain fiber that I've shown you in previous videos. I still haven't figured out how to get that stuff fully textile quality yet, but I think this will help. If you're new to Good and Basic, please subscribe below and hit the like button. Arr! They look like weapons of mass destruction, don't they? Arr!